Hello guys, Kenji here at Life of Clay. Welcome back to my channel and same goes to our new viewers out there. And guys, don't forget to subscribe and click the notification bell so you will be notified whenever I uploaded new video tutorial. And our subject this time is the enormous of all, the Goliath Beetle. Without further ado, come on and let's begin. Of course, the usual method, form the armature using aluminum foil, shape it and make it dense as much as possible. I do sketching for sometimes, especially for those insects with tricky shape, and it's my guide in forming it. You can also do this guys if you are not so sure of how to start your sculpture shapes. And while we're doing this guys, let me give you again a quick trivia. Goliathus giganteus orientalis, its scientific name, is just one among many of their subspecies. It's the largest of genus Goliathus with a body length of about 2 to 3.9 inches in males and 2 to 2.6 inches in females. But this one we're making is the male. Its body is broad and flat. Elytra or the wing casings are whitish with a complex pattern of black markings. And the thoracic shield usually shows large black longitudinal stripes and it may differ from subspecies to subspecies. Males has a black colored Y-shaped horn used for battling with other rivals. It has a strong long legs and despite of its size, it flies very well. It feeds primarily on tree sap and fruits. And that's it guys, now that we learned something about this beetle, let's proceed. I love trying out new strategies in doing sculptures. And this time, I do the first wrapping of Super Sculpey and later after baking it, Wrapping again with Sculpey Original. You can try different method guys. Do not afraid to experiment and if sometimes we fail, those failures will teach us to become more better the next time. So keep on discovering new methods and techniques. I am now exposing the separation between elytra and the abdomen. So I can determine where is my starting point in sculpting the details on its belly. I'm now adding the separation line of the wing cases along with the scutellum or the triangular plate behind its protorac. And now I'm adding those two pointy part on its wing cases along with the two pointy part on its side. I'm not neglecting these details for these are important in achieving realistic sculptures. And now finalizing the shape of the wing cases by trimming the excess edge. And now I'm forming the abdomen. I mark and scoop out the area of the abdomen where the legs will be placed. Thank you. 
I'm not too picky or technical in using tools. Whatever I can grab and think can do the particular job, I use it. In this case, I smooth out the area with this brush handle. And now I'm adding that arrow shaped plate in its abdomen and fusing it with the clay around it. And as I mentioned, I used this old card in adding segments to this beetle's abdomen. Now I'm adding a thin noodle of clay around the edge of the body. This will serve as fur of the beetle after... I added textures into it. And as I done sculpting the body and added all the details, I bake it so I may able to hold it for the next sculpting stage, which is the thorax and the head. I sculpted the horn of this beetle separately using black remo and aluminum wire. Bake it and just attach on the head later on. And now we're doing the thorax, shaping it based on the reference. I just keep on adding sheets of clay until I get the precise shape of the thorax. And using the same method I've done on its abdomen, scoop out the area underneath his thorax for the pair of his front legs. Now I'm adding the throat, in which I knew it was an eye, but actually my entomologist friend said that it is actually his throat. And thank you for that, my friend. You know who you are. I scoop out this area of his head for the eyes to be embed later and you know guys beetles are just one among many insects with compound eyes meaning instead of seeing one view like we do with our eyes they have many different parts to their eyes and each part sees a slightly different picture how so nice to have an eyes like those these are the polymer eyeballs I'm telling you guys that I bake in advance that I use to embed on the head and I am now assembling the head parts. I made a deep cut on the front of the head so I can insert the horns just like that and handsome isn't he? And I'm continuing adding details on the head.
And I made a hole in his head near the eyes using a piercing tool. Don't worry, Mr. Goliath, it's just like a bioturbinant. And that's it. These holes are for the antennae. And brush it all over with alcohol to smooth out and bake it. And I start the legs by wrapping with a very thin sheet of black primo. And don't forget to add those little spines beneath the patella or the lower part of the leg. I make sure that all the legs have the same size. And I'm adding those connecting joints in between legs. I'm sculpting now the second set of legs and these are different from the front legs. They have hairs or fur on the patella or the lower part and I'm going to imitate that in clay through texture. And I'm continuously sculpting the legs up to the last pairs. Now all legs are finished. Brush them with alcohol and bake them. I did a little bit of sanding to make it smooth and to prepare it for painting. I already done drilling the holes for the legs attachment and our Goliath here is ready for assembly. For the painting process, I use Fock Art Titanium White Yellow Ochre pure black, burnt amber, and burnt sienna. This is just a plastic dessert tray from the grocery that I can just throw away after using. This first mix of paint is black and burnt amber for the ventral area and legs. I made several coatings of it until the clay underneath is no longer visible. I wipe out the paint that touches the wing cases using wet cotton buds, so when painting it with white later, there will be no visible patches of black underneath. I covered the legs with cling wrap so as to avoid them touched by the white paint during application. I add a touch of yellow ochre and burnt amber to make it dirty looking white since beetles are crawling on everywhere and they get dirty. And pure titanium white doesn't feel so realistic for a beetle. Well, I think that made sense. Now we're removing the plastic and as you can see, all legs came out very clean. 
it saves your time from retouching. And I use diluted yellow ochre and burnt amber as wash and brush it on specific areas based on the reference. These effects will add a little age to the beetle. Since the one I am making is an adult male. I'm now painting the black thin lines on the scutellum all the way to the edges of the wing cases and thorax. painting those longitudinal stripes on its thoracic shield and this is what I love the most these intricate patterns that most insect has Adding these details is a time-consuming job, but after the work is done, the end result is so priceless. I combine yellow ochre, titanium white, and burnt sienna to add highlights on the fur under this beetle along with the patellia or the lower leg fur and uh, those on the crevices. Thank you. 